From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here. It's the morning after. It's pretty darn cool. All right, we kind of shuffled things up. We were going to do some open phones today, and in a way we will, but the subject at hand is going to be the Predators. Do you mind? Let's get into the Predators after just an amazing win last night. Uh, arguably one of the, the most important games in, in Nashville history, much less Predators history, as they now are going to be playing for the Stanley Cup. We're going to talk about that. Take some of your calls, questions as we go along the lines with someone who is kind enough to come in and join us today after, what, about three hours uh, sleep. Uh, sports director here at News Channel 5, Steve Lehman. Good morning to you. What's up? Thank How you for coming you? on. Hope, we're going to get that monitor on in a moment so you can look at yourself. All right, uh, we'll uh, see that so we know we're wrong. Trust me, at this point we're... of the moment, uh, yeah. no makeup or anything. We don't uh, need to turn anything on. <laughs> he so. walked in a moment ago he's wearing shorts and flip-flops and I'm listen so you were there of course last night I yep. know you and John were both there yep and uh, you were inside you had to do a live feed afterwards uh, talk about a little bit and we're gonna show video throughout the morning but just what, what's your takeaway from this what was the feel like in there how do you describe it what a night what mm -hmm. a night for the Preds what a night for the city of Nashville just on the the global stage last night and the crowd delivered as they have this yeah. entire playoffs and the team delivered i mean just let's get to the game first because that's okay. why everything's going on yeah they jump to an early lead goal within a minute and 21 seconds get another goal shortly after that it's a two nothing lead and it just feels like everything's going to come but the ducks really dominated the course of play throughout the night they outshot the preds 41 to 18. Remember, there's no Ryan Johansson on your top line anymore. Right. Mike Fisher's out with what we think is What's a concussion. concussion. Okay. And so your top two line centers aren't there. Yeah. These were four lines that were basically makeshifted together going into game five on Saturday. And I think last night what you saw was that lack of continuity really come forward. The Ducks pressed throughout the night. And it just felt like in the second and third period, it was only a matter of time until they were going to break through. Eventually, they tie the game at three. And you could kind of feel mm -hmm. it in the arena, Nick. The people were wondering, oh, man, is yeah. this not the night? It felt like it was the you night. You don't want to go it? back. You that's definitely sure. don't want to go back to game seven out there in Anaheim. Yeah. And that's where the crowd came in because uh -huh. the crowd willed them. They got a huge penalty kill there with about six and a half minutes to go. Yep. And then right out of that, Callie Yarncroke finds Colton Sissons, who, by the way, yes. will be toasted in the city of Nashville for a long, long time now, to come. Was he the was he this front line center? He, he played on the top played, line. He, he moved took up. the place of right. He he had been playing basically third line center for the majority of the season, but now in Johansson's absence and Fisher's absence, moved up to the top line between Pontus Aberg and Philip Forsberg. He scores three, three goals, goals yesterday. Yeah, wow. First career hat trick, including the game winner with six minutes to go. And as the empty netters trickled in in the final couple of minutes of desperation for the Ducks, that place just continued to get louder and louder, reached a crescendo when the butt horn finally sounded and the Preds were Western Conference champs for the God, first time. That is just awesome. Watching the highlights here, and I don't know if you saw this morning, uh, Again, this is something known as a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And this is uh, one of the few days where people yeah. still go out and get them. <laughs> get right? a newspaper. And this is a cool one. This is one I'm going to save. All right. Prehistoric. Yeah. All right. Uh, of course, the Predators, pre and historic. And this is, if you can put it into context, there are folks now, I think, that uh, don't fully understand the game of hockey for one reason or another a lot of like myself I can't say I know all the rules I enjoy watching it I never really played it but I'm a big Preds fan because first of all everyone loves a winner sure. all right and and you have all these folks coming out now supporting them 20,000 where were they during the regular season well now as they keep winning it brings and there's nothing yeah. wrong with this but what does it mean for the city as a sports town to maybe finally be playing which we will be for a world championship first and foremost it's to me last night was the biggest sporting event ever contested in this city. Okay, and I mean, it's, think it's about not that. Close. That's a pretty big deal, and I think yeah, it's bigger than the Titans because the Titans yeah. did not win the AFC Championship with a home game here. Right. They had to go to Jacksonville. The only real comparative would be if the Titans would ever host an AFC Championship right. game here, and that would be bigger. Yeah, but. This last night was oh, no the opportunity to go play for a world championship. Nashville, Tennessee playing for a world championship and having the opportunity to do that 
on home ice in yeah, your hometown yeah, it's just cool. and the entire city being around it. There were 17,113 inside the building last <laughs> night like there are every night. Right. But outside last night, I heard one Metro cop tell, I think it was John Cole Newland last night, that he thought there could have been as many as 20,000 people downtown outside. in the couple of blocks just around the, uh, the arena. That might have been high, but either way, you're talking about 30,000 people probably in the two square block radius all cheering on a hockey team in Nashville. And that's the thing. I keep hearing this as I've written a lot of things about the Preds and the fan base and mm -hmm. how cool this run has been. Yep. I think true hockey people have known for a while what a gem this market is in terms of how the Predators do things in the organization, the team they've built, the job David Poyle's done. They're very professional the coach and well run. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. And they've also realized that the fans are great. Yeah. What this run has done through eight nights now in the postseason in Nashville, Nick, has illustrated the fact that Nashville, Music City, really is a hockey city as well. There is no equal. Mm -hmm. Not just in the NHL, but in my mind, in professional sports today, in terms of your entertainment dollar and product on the ice, than huh. what the Nashville Predators put out there. Yeah. I've said for a while that that's the loudest building I've ever been in. Really? I thought game four of the Blackhawks series was the loudest, not just loudest building generally, but I thought it was the loudest I've ever heard any building, mm -hmm. and I've been in a few. Every game since has gotten louder, yeah. and the players keep saying that too. It's like, what do you expect from the fans? Well, they're going to be loud, but I thought they couldn't get any louder the last game. Yeah. And then tonight or tomorrow or whatever, they just get louder. I expect that to continue in the Stanley Cup final, but last night was simply deafening. Definitely, people with ears ringing this morning. What's kind of cool is uh, I, it was a rumor that turned out to be unfounded, but we had heard maybe Guinness was going to send a representative there from the world records to, to kind of get a gauge how loud was it and how does it stack sure. up against the loudest all time. It's... <laughs> it's apparently a very – like I, I asked engine. some people about that yesterday. Yeah. It's apparently a very long process okay. to get Guinness to come out and do that. Yeah. However, what I can tell you is the <laughs> NBC Sports Network crew that – broadcast game four measured the volume during the game on their broadcast. They had it at 129.4. The all-time Guinness record for an <clears throat> indoor arena is 130.4. Wow. Set by Fog Allen Fieldhouse at the University of Kansas back in February. It was louder last night than it was in game four. So, so had they been there, there were, I think there'd be a new record because yep. I think they would have topped Someone it. needs to fill out that paperwork and get them here for some because obviously we're hosting more games now, you know, and once the yep. Stanley Cup. There's at least two more coming. Listen, what I want to do before we go to our first break is just uh, Chris Conti did a nice piece. You talked about the crowd outside mm -hmm. and the loud and all of this. He, he, as usual, he and Bud Nelson, great photographer, captured some of the moments right after the game. Let's take a look at that and then, and then we'll take a break and come back. And if you want to join in, if you have a question, 737-7587, or just a comment about the Preds, your observation about this happening in our sports town now, which is, like, we could become title town. What if the Preds win and then the Titans win the Super? Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Hey, hey they're, all, they're awesome. all trending up right now. Yeah. It's a good time to be Yeah, we should talk City. more about that. All right, let's have a look at Chris's piece and uh, just take in the flavor of what happened last night. We're awesome! We're number one! We're going to get the Stanley Cup! It's our town. Our time. When they write the history of this city, of this town, this night, painted in blue and gold, will be a defining chapter. It's the Stanley Cup! It's the best day of my entire life! How could it not be after a moment like this? When the Predators came to Nashville in 1998, they were an improbable dream, an afterthought in the NHL. They are now a force to be reckoned with. And this city, so desperate for a team to rally around, finally has something to celebrate. Oh, we've been waiting 10 years for this. This is awesome. Western Conference champions. Late nights, sudden deaths. You're tired, but this is not a dream. This is what it means for our city. We are just in a great Tonight on Broadway and Fifth, we were all on the same team. Music City singing the same high note in unison. We got the cup, it's coming here. There's no way we're not gonna win it. When they write the history of this city, of our home, this team, and this moment will always belong to us. Let's go, Preds! Let's go, Preds! 
Chris Conti, News Channel 5. So everyone was out there, of course, uh, the woman there was Mayor Barry, yeah. and she was out there with the crowd. And All right, um, as we go to the break, the Stanley Cup playoffs, the finals begin when? Monday. Next Regardless Monday of how this plays out, whether it goes six games or seven games in the other series. Yep. The, okay. I mean, Pittsburgh has a chance to close out in Ottawa tonight, and then Thursday night it would be game seven there. Okay. But regardless, game one, and for the Preds, they'll be on the road, whoever it is. Okay. The first home game here will be Saturday, June the 3rd, and then for sure Monday, okay. uh, June 5th, I guess it would be. Wow. Well, right. One quick yeah. thing, because yeah. I thought Chris captured it really well there, but just to piggyback off of that, I said this last night as we were wrapping up the 10 o'clock news. The thing that was so cool to me as someone who's now lived in the city of Nashville for seven years, it's certainly mm -hmm. home for me, and I love it, is we all love this city. I think a lot of people around the country figured out how great it is. Hockey is an international sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about just where the Preds, Pekka Rinne is from Finland. You've got oh, yeah. a top line, basically, that are all a bunch of Swedes. Roman Yossi is a Swiss guy. You've got a bunch of Canadians on this team. This is an international story that's now being told in all those different languages, right. and it's being told about the city of Nashville. And last night, the entire world saw not just how good our hockey team is, not just how good our hockey fans are, and they are good. Mm -hmm. They saw how cool the city of Nashville yeah, is because there's no point. scene like that anywhere. And mm -hmm. they saw that a year ago at the All-Star game when they came in, mm -hmm. and they're only getting it now in waves here during these playoffs. The stories told about Nashville and about this organization and the people here over the next two weeks in the Stanley Cup Final are absolutely going to be great. This is going to be one of the truly great moments. Yeah. in the city's history. And once again, it's, it's great for the city. I'm glad you brought that up because this, this show is not sports line. Right. We'll talk maybe a little more about that, but also what it means to the city and, and our brand. And every time you watch it on TV and they show, just like they do when they have a Monday night football game or something, the panorama of the downtown mm -hmm. city, people around the world seeing that saying, I want to visit Nashville. You, you don't yeah. have to understand the neutral zone trap. <laughs> to I feel don't. like this is a really cool yeah. thing See, and moment. For I the thought city. icing was on a cake. <laughs> All right, so listen, we'll take a break. When we come back, um, you know, we're going to continue our conversation, show you uh, more of the highlights. We'll even have John Burton's piece and uh, talk with Steve more about his take on where the Predators go from here. And we can take some of your calls if you want to jump in. I know many of you this early in the morning that we're at the game and we're into it are probably still asleep. But 737 <laughs> 7587 if you want to jump in. We'll be back right after this. Here's another smart remodeling tip from Granite Transformations. Choose a company that does everything from design through installation. See how easy it is to transform your kitchen or bathroom with gorgeous quartz and granite, backed by our lifetime warranty, plus custom cabinet refacing. Explore the exciting possibilities at the new look, new style celebration happening now at Granite Transformations. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. If you want to shed the fat and sculpt your core to get those sexy toned abs of your dreams, then stop doing sit-ups. Say what? And start dancing with Hip Hop Abs, the fun new ab sculpting system from insanity creator Sean T. I don't want you to ever get down on the floor to do crunches again. I'm going to break it down so you burn the fat and sculpt those abs fast. Just do Sean's easy to follow moves to work your upper abs, middle abs, lower abs, and obliques, all while you're dancing. I went from a size 18 to a size 2. I have abs now. I've got a six pack. And now the complete 80 dollar hip hop abs system is 75% off. That's right. Hip hop abs is only 19.95. We'll even upgrade you to express shipping free. Get the complete hip hop abs system for only 19.95. Call 1-800-339-1045 or order online at gethiphopabs.com. That's 1-800-339-1045. Call now. When faced with cancer, the search for resources, education, and hope are essential. The mission of Amgen's Breakaway from Cancer is to help those in need. When I was diagnosed, I vowed not to give up on my dream of being a professional cyclist. The work that Breakaway from Cancer and the cancer support community are doing is a win for everyone affected by this disease. At BreakawayFromCancer.com, Breakaway from Cancer and its nonprofit partners offer services to complement those provided by your medical team. When my brother was battling cancer, 
I needed help navigating the mazes of health care and insurance issues. Breakaway from Cancer and the Patient Advocate Foundation helped me find my way. From emotional support to financial assistance and finding hope. Through Breakaway from Cancer, I found a community. A community that inspires me. Whether you or someone close to you is newly diagnosed, finished treatment, or just wants to reduce risk, Breakaway from Cancer is here to help. Go to breakawayfromcancer.com to get started now. Inside Politics on News Channel 5 Plus, a show where decision makers from Nashville... You're moving very aggressively on this. I don't think this is something that we can wait on. All the way to our nation's capital aren't afraid to speak up. Could have been chaos in the House of Representatives. Each week, host Pat Nolan sits down for exclusive interviews with some of the most influential players in politics. That may be the issue. Inside Politics, Friday nights at 7 on News Channel 5 Plus and at these encore times. We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Morning Line, not Sports Line, but this is Steve Lehman. And we just could not not have a show this morning about the Predators. Now, I know some of you, um, you know, may not have watched it. Yeah, not everyone. It's hard to believe as much as you see all this. You think all of Nashville, and I hope all of Nashville is behind the Preds. Yeah. Some people maybe because they don't know the sport as well. I remember when we first got the Predators, Steve, um, I thought, all right, again, it's another one of these southern cities that's getting a hockey team. It wasn't the first choice by the person who brought a tenant to the arena. They wanted NBA. Right. But that didn't work out because the Grizzlies were already here, and they settled on a, the, I say settled because that's what it was at the time, hockey. But now I agree with you. This town has always had a wonderful core support of the Preds. Mm -hmm. And I think this run now is going to bring a whole legion of new fans. And I think certainly it's here to stay. There were times, you know, we came close at one point where we were worried the Predators were going to leave. 2007, they were yeah. on the way out the door basically yeah. to Hamilton, Ontario, when the local leadership group, ownership Thank group goodness. led by Tom Sigaran stepped up and ensured the fact that they would stay here. Since then, they have run flawlessly. Mm -hmm. And they have become ingrained in this city. They are a oh, yeah. fabric of this community. With this now, they're part of it. Uh, for, for good. And I think a point that we really should make is when they first arrived, no one had any ties to this sport or this team around right. here. But now, if you think about it, they've played 18 seasons. They've essentially been here for 20 years. Mm -hmm. There was a lockout year. There was the year that they were getting ready at the beginning. You would have to find about a 25-year-old to find someone who remembers life in Nashville <laughs> without the Predators right. at this point. And so, well, a lot of... Uh, a lot, of, uh, certainly our parents, and while yeah. our generation, things like that, remembers Nashville before the Preds, mm -hmm. the newest generation doesn't. And so you have a whole group of fans now who've grown up with nothing but hockey and nothing but the Predators in this town. And now, for about 10 years, being a consistent winner that's consistently in the playoffs. That's why this town has gotten so far behind this team. They are really ingrained, and in some ways, it's taken a long time. But in some ways, I think the journey for this team makes it all the much more sweeter. Mm -hmm. The Titans' magical run in year one at, yeah, at right the Coliseum the was awesome. Yeah. But at the same time, it sort of didn't make anybody work for it. Mm -hmm. The fact that this team had to go from expansion to relevance to the playoffs for the first time to an owner trying to take them to Hamilton, Ontario, yeah. fight it off to, to stay here, then become a consistent playoff team, and now a legit Stanley Cup contender and into the Stanley Cup final. That journey, I think, has taken a lot of people along for the ride, and it's why this is so special. That's what's great. Paid their dues and oh, people yeah. who wrote it. Now, I just want to get a sense from you. How unusual, I'm trying to think of some of the other sports, the wild card teams, and every once in a while, most recently, I guess, in the NFL, the Packers a few years back with Aaron Rodgers, they weren't the last team in. Were the Predators the last team into the playoffs, or they second to last team in? Well, there was another eight seed in the other conference. Which team was um, record-wise better? The Preds had a better record than the eight seed in the Eastern Conference, because okay, so that they, was the only team in the playoffs and how, that they and so had a better record 16 from. teams make the playoffs. Correct. The Predators, Predators had were the 15th, the 15th best record, or worst record, however you want to put it. And, and here they are. And it seems like, to me, sometimes in hockey, more than some of these other sports, you're more likely, for whatever reason, to see an eight seed maybe upset a one seed or a, or you know a seven seed upset a two seed. Then in, in the NBA, it's very it just never. You look at what the NBA is doing now. These playoffs have been great. The NBA and I and I like the NBA too, but those playoffs have been awful. Right. I mean the Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors have just roared through it, hardly losing a game. The Predators as a number eight seed are now in the final. Yep. 
And the NBA could have saved us all a lot of time if they just said, Cavs, Warriors, you guys go play yeah. like a best of 15 series. Right. That would have been much more entertaining. I actually heard, <clears throat> this probably doesn't happen a lot on open line, I'm going to invoke the odds makers in Vegas. I actually heard one last night say that there is a greater chance for the last team in the playoffs in the NHL to win the cup than the team with the third best odds in the NBA yeah. going into the playoffs to win over the Warriors or the Cavaliers. That's just the level of parity. Right. The, the NHL has a, a salary cap that has basically prevented any juggernaut super teams like the Golden State Warriors where you have a Steph Curry. Four uh, All-Stars. Kevin Durant. Draymond, Draymond Green, Green Clay, Clay Thompson, Thompson, all yeah. those guys. You have a bunch of guys with max contracts on the same teams mm -hmm. in the NBA. You don't have that in the NHL. You have to fit it all in under the salary cap. It means there's much more parity. The game itself is way more close. I mean, last night, for instance, the Ducks outshot the Preds 41-18. to They outchanced them basically 2-1 to one yeah. and lost 6-3. to three. Right. It's about capitalizing on your opportunities. and It's about maybe more than anything – Great goaltender. I was and say, during this run, the Predators have had the best goaltender on the planet in Pecorino. And that's what always seems to come into play. Some people may look and say, well, he gave up three goals. Okay. But then you look at how many shots he faced. And, I mean, there's just no question. He did an amazing job. So he's, he's is he older for a goaltender? He's 34. And coming I mean, is that year. considered older? I know Dominic Hasek, who's one of the all-time greats, played till he was 40. Not for us. He played for many other teams. Right. But, I mean, is, and he is, led Buffalo on a great charge in the playoffs. The, yeah. the question about the Predators really coming into the year was, man, are they loaded line to line to line? This may be one of the most talented teams in the NHL. But at 34... How much does Pecorine have left in the tank? And to think now, here we are, looking at the same guy yeah. playing better than anybody on the planet. He is truly the best goaltender in the world right now, leading his team to the Stanley Cup Final. Mm -hmm. It's a remarkable run, and you couldn't be happier for someone because he is the longest-tenured Predator. He was a guy that they got in the fourth round back in, I think, 2004. Yeah. Kind of found. They molded him through their system. It got him up through Milwaukee, got him to the big club. He became a superstar, and for a good three or four years, 2009 to 2012, he was pretty much the best goaltender in the world. The team didn't match him, and oftentimes okay. in the playoffs, he would shine and be maybe... He can only do so much. He'd yeah. do what he did last night and give up one or two goals, and the Preds couldn't outscore that, and right. they'd lose in a playoff series. And then when the team started to turn the corner a couple years ago, he had a couple injuries, he had a bad illness one year, and people wondered what was left. So many minutes, so much time in that crease, what was left. And a big thing this year for the Preds is the revelation of UC Soros, their backup goaltender, Pekka unfortunately over the last several years because they really didn't have a good backup was playing close to 70 games a year during the regular season yeah. out of the 82 that's a ton for a goaltender and I think when he got to the playoffs he frankly was worn out this year he didn't have to do that he played more around the range of 60 upper yep. 50s he seemed to be much he's more fresher. fresh in this postseason and he's been phenomenal what's that? I'm just wondering uh, you get to see this and are we talk about what happens on the ice I, I'm curious off the ice I mean what's he kind of like I'm sure you know I mean I'm sure you're gonna say he's a nice guy but I've always heard from a lot of these sports folks that um, among all the sports that you go interview with and there's a lot of egos and frankly a bunch of jerks a lot of jerks uh, and, and I'm not asking you to name the jerks yeah but I've heard that in general people say hockey players are some of the most accessible and easier to deal with and I'm talking easier than baseball football or basketball I'm not asking you to name jerks but have you found that to be in your experience that hockey players tend to be a little more friendly or is it is it blurred for you I don't know first off I would just say in my experience more times than not athletes are pretty good they're pretty willing of their time they're pretty willing to give back so I would oh, say come on, they got more, egos. More, I run into this, some of these guys and frankly some of them are clowns I'm not talking uh, about the hockey players I oh. say that's because they've been pampered all their life and they don't like a tough question and no, I have, no, I have sure. no tolerance for that crap well but I've heard that hockey players are really good about it generally yes I think hockey players are hockey players are just friendly are very accessible they, they take a different demeanor off the ice than they do sometimes yeah, on they the seem ice. so humble. I will I, say about Pecorino, he is truly 
I won't just say he's a nice guy. Yeah. He's the nicest guy. Is he a humble I think I've kind ever of met. Incredibly ice, humble. He he's seems... fiery. If he struggles, he's fiery. I've heard stories yeah, okay. about him slamming things in the locker room and things like that after the game of a bat. You remember back actually probably game seven last year in the second round. Yeah. He got pulled when the team in front of him basically laid an egg in game seven against the Sharks after traveling back and forth to Anaheim, San Jose, yeah. playing every other night for a month basically. They just ran out of gas and had nothing left. He gave up four goals and what ultimately was a 5 nothing win. He got pulled. Yeah. And when he got pulled, he smashed his <laughs> stick over the goal. That was kind of the biggest outburst anyone had ever seen of Pekka. And it was emblematic of that night. I think that's in there. That's his fiery side. But when you talk to him off the ice, incredibly humble, accessible. incredibly Willing giving of his time, accessible, yeah. just a really, really nice guy. Nice guy. And that's that, what I that heard. makes yeah. his teammates, I think, appreciate him even more. He never wants to take the credit, so they always heap it on him. Yeah. And I think it makes them lay down in front of him. Austin Watson last night had seven or eight block shots. I mean, that talk hurts, about just oh, every single <laughs> think time. About it. You're laying down in front of a slap shot, giving it up for your body. There's no one tougher than hockey players either, is there? I know no. football is obviously a violent sport, but hockey, Mike, none of the, why don't they wear mouth guards? <laughs> Toughness. Okay. Toughness. I know, but they don't have any teeth. Wouldn't you weather at, wear a mouth guard and protect your teeth? They don't get the teeth fixed oftentimes either. First off, oh, I know there were yeah. multiple guys last night who did get teeth fixed. Uh, off the record, lots of guys did. That's how physical it was. But there's a couple guys on the Man. team, Austin Watson being one of them, who has not had front teeth for as long as I can remember. That's just part of the shtick or part of the deal yeah. of being an enforcer in the NHL. Yeah. The, the thing that will happen, and, and Nashville's never quite had to go through this because you haven't had this long of a run. Whenever this ends, which now will be at the end of the Stanley Cup final, yeah. however many games that goes, you will be stunned at the news that trickles out at what some of these guys are playing with. I mean, we, we got okay. a taste the other day. Ryan Johansson finished game four. Yeah. He had emergency surgery within a couple hours after the game, which had he had not, he probably would have lost his leg. leg. Wow. He had an but he stayed on there and finished the game with he the injury. Had, yeah, he had an acute compartment syndrome, yeah, which for that. those of you yeah. who don't know, that's when pressure builds up and essentially makes a limb of your body go numb. And it's like and it was, blood. It was in his thigh. Yeah, but blood was basically pooling, pressure was forming, and... You know, if it has nowhere to go, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna there. be it's in real trouble before long. They sell, he finished the game. The, most people I know think this happened about the second period. He finished the game, was walking around in the locker room as if nothing was wrong afterwards. Somehow he felt something, and the trainers checked him out and said that's not right. They rushed him to the emergency room and had surgery. He's gonna be fine. There's no nerve damage, none of that, which is great. But that's the type of thing you're talking about here. Concussions, you're talking about broken you, limbs, things like that. We're going to hear all, right. all about that. Is this you always hear like a, a soft tissue injury, whatever right. that means. All right, we'll take a break. <laughs> it's interesting. Listen, we'll be back uh, with more with Steve Lehman as we talk about uh, the historic win for the Predators last night on to the Stanley Cup. And who, if you have an opinion, would be a better matchup for the Predators, uh, since we still don't know who they're going to play. We'll be back right after this. This is a Storm 5 HD weather update. Sign up for Weather Call at NewsChannel5.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Storm 5 meteorologist Leland Statham. This afternoon, a mix of sun and clouds around the area with temperatures warming up into the mid to upper 70s. But late in the day, more clouds begin to roll in. So more of a mostly cloudy sky for the big Preds party on the plaza this evening. Here's a look at the temperatures for you at this hour. And here's what's happening right now from Nashville International. Your Monday forecast, high just shy of 80 degrees for you today with the wind north-northeast at about 5 to 10. Now at 5 p.m., look for a temp right around 77 when the puck drops in Smashville tonight. Look for a mostly cloudy sky and right around 71 degrees. Some of our southern counties could see rain tonight. Most of us dry. Rain chance tomorrow, greater chance in the eastern counties than the best chance of rain Tuesday night in the Wednesday. Our community is rising. And in the push and pull of progress, reliable information keeps you connected, safe, alert. Trust is everything. The News Channel 5 Network runs toward the future, eager to tell it all, hold the powerful accountable, and keep a watchful eye over everything you hold dear. Thank you for trusting the News Channel 5 Network to be your news and information leader.
，有请。She's dancing. Help protect your baby. Download the free Count the Kicks app. Studies show that regularly monitoring a baby's movements helps reduce the chance of stillbirth. Your turn. Count the Kicks. Visit countthekicks.org. Ducks control. Here is Fowler with a drive. He scores. Into the duck zone, tries to put a move on Fowler, and then actually Cam Fowler tied it, and then that is the, the game, game winner. Colton okay. Sisson's third of the night, first career hat trick, putting the Predators over the top. Pretty, yeah. You know what's what's neat about this is you just listen to the crowd there, and welcome back to uh, Morning Line. Uh, Steve Lehman with us, News Channel Five Sports. I mean. What's incredible to me is when I when I saw they lost, you know, their two centers and, you know, the injuries and all this, I was like, gosh, are they that deep that they can bounce back, that resilient? And they did. And I don't know, it's got to be because they're a team. But, I mean, if, if now I'm not saying any of the players they lost are as good as, say, LeBron James. But if the Cavaliers lose LeBron James, they're done, okay? Yep. And, and yet, you know, we lose two of our captain and our starting center and – it, we don't miss a beat. They're certainly resilient. There's no question about that. They're also remarkably deep. They have now played 18 different forwards okay. in the postseason. You, you, you have four lines of three is how every team will start any game. Okay. They've played 18 in mixed match pairs. And they brought the some up from the, the minor league team right. too, right? Those 18 are the tied for the most of any team in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs in terms of matching. So that's partly injuries. That's partly the depth of what they can do. But here's the real story of the depth. 16 different guys on their team have scored a goal hmm. in the postseason. 10 different guys have scored game winners in 12 wins in the postseason. It is just a remarkable showing of balance where a different guy each night steps up. Colton Sissons was benched midway through the year. He had a hat trick last night in the clinching game. The game winner on Saturday night in game five was Pontus Auberg, who played much of the season in Milwaukee. He was the leading goal scorer for the Admirals, the minor league hockey team. He really wasn't in the lineup in the postseason. He played one game until Kevin Fiala broke his leg right. in game one against the Blues. He's been in the lineup ever since. He gets that goal on Saturday night to bring it back here to allow them to clinch on home ice. It's a different guy every night. It is a system that they all believe in, and you're right. It's not necessarily a superstar. We actually did, I, I think, a pretty cool piece last week before, I think it was game four, where we ran out to fans on the street ahead of the game, and we just said, who's your favorite Predator? We asked probably 10 people. I did not get the same answer twice. Really? Everybody had a different answer. It was P.K. Subban or Roman Yossi or mm -hmm. Ryan Ellis or Mike Fisher or Ryan Johansson or on and on down the list. Everybody had a different hero, a different star on this team, and I think that is why this team is in the position it is, is other than Pecorine, who has basically been there every night of the playoffs with yeah. his brilliant form, someone else has stepped up each and every night. That's why they're in the Stanley Cup final. Let's take a call. We finally have sure. someone who's probably a Preds fan that's gotten up after someone the Someone who set night, the alarm this morning. <laughs> hey, Anthony, good morning. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's on your mind, Anthony? Oh, man, I'm just rocking and rolling with the Preds. I've been uh, here in uh, Tennessee. I'm in the Robertson County area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a hockey player back in the old days. Oh, awesome. Nice. I'm a little older fella, but yeah. uh, back in the days, that's what I used to do. And uh, I'm from Chicago originally, but uh, mom and dad uh, retired here uh, in Robertson County. And uh, now I'm living in the uh, Cooperstown area, just a little bit outside Springfield, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And uh, we got a lot of Preds fans, man. We've been rocking it. We've been going uh, every other night. You know, every time there's a Preds game, we have a little meeting. <laughs> we, all, we all get together, and uh, we, we hope and uh, celebrate. And we're hoping that, uh, you know, the Cup, the Lord Stanley Cup, uh, which is something that is really uh, prestigious, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, that will come to Nashville. And we're hoping and, and we're really uh, positive about that. 
Listen, I'm with you, and I think it's great what you said you guys do. One of the cool things about this, just bringing people together. I mean, aside from the sport, there's people coming together, unlike him, that don't even really know that much about hockey, but just want to get behind the home team, which I just think is awesome. And then you, and then you start learning about it. Like I said, yep. I've learned more about hockey in the past just two or three weeks as I've paid closer attention than in the 20 years prior. Hockey's a nuanced game. It takes a little yeah, while. It, really it takes is. a while to watch Especially it to figure it out. It. Exactly. It. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I've been to every arena that spreads have been in on the road during this run. Yeah. Chicago, St. Louis, Anaheim. Chicago fans very much used to this because right. they've won three cups in seven years. They've been around. They've gone through all these playoff battles. They're great fans. Okay. The Preds kept them out of the building. You know, they, they basically quieted them. the building with how they played is, there. Is that the first time that a number eight, one seed's been swept by a number eight seed? It is. I think it, it is. is. The so first time an eight seed has swept a one seed in either the NHL or the NBA. Okay, that's, that's a how big historic deal. that was. Right, you forget but, that. But that's, the Preds basically basically shut their fans down with how they played yeah, in that series. Yeah, which is great. St. Louis doesn't compare to the atmosphere of what you have in Nashville. Anaheim's like on a different planet I gotta than ask what you, you have I mean, we here watch, in I mean, More people come up to me and say, we're watching the game, and there's all these empty seats in Anaheim. And I don't yeah. know, maybe that's the L.A. I, way, <laughs> and they're just not into it. But what, what's your, I, you were there, right? I what does it look yeah, like in and, there? Just, they're into it. I, but there were empty seats. So I gave them a pass for <laughs> game one because it was a Friday night that started at 6 p.m. local time. And basically that arena is surrounded by I-5 yeah. and the 405 freeway. And if you know anything about those two interstates, it is a nightmare. Yeah, we think yeah. we have traffic problems here. Yeah, I live it there. It is nothing like that. Oh, that's a and pass. So that's good call. I kind of gave them a pass for the fact that basically it wasn't full until the second period of yeah. game one. And then I looked on Sunday in game two, which was Sunday at 4 p.m. and it still wasn't full at the start and I just thought Predators uh, Bridgestone Arena for Predators games is full 30 minutes before yeah, puck drop right. where are all you guys you know it's not like a revelation the traffic's bad out here no. figure it it's out not and like get they've there been on spoiled time. either so I mean I, I don't know it, it, again another indication you see it firsthand we've got the best fans let's go to Barbara Barbara good morning good morning how are you guys hi hey, Barbara. Barbara yeah you hear me yeah we got you what's on your mind well, I was at the game last night. Oh, okay, good. Lucky you. Oh, hey, I'm yeah. in 107. I got great seats. Oh, that's All it. Right. So you've been a season ticket holder for years, or did you just buy them for the game? Five years. Five years, okay. Good for you. So you've been through some tough times, and now you get to enjoy this. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, my question is, after I got home, I had on the NHL channel, and they were interviewing the uh, Ducks coach. Mm-hmm. And he made two statements, which one I don't understand. He said all the goals that the Preds made during the playoffs were what he called dirty goals. And then he also said it wasn't fair that they ended round two on a Wednesday and had to play round three starting with us on a Friday. And he thinks the NHL should do something about that to give him more of a break. Uh, I don't understand the dirty goal comment unless he's saying we played dirty, which... Yeah, that's crazy yeah, compared to his team. I, I can I can do that. The other term people often use for that are greasy goals. That's probably the better call, uh, okay. call in the NHL. It, and what that means is you're doing the hard work. You're being physical in front of the net. You're in front of the goaltender. Oftentimes you get deflections. A guy will shoot it from the perimeter, but you have a guy in front mm -hmm, of the net mm -hmm. who can get a stick on it or get an elbow on it or something mm -hmm. to deflect it by the goaltender. What he was saying was not that the Preds were dirty. He was saying they were doing the dirty work. So not necessarily derogatory. Tr He's just saying that was He was actually scoring. giving them credit yeah. in hockey lingo to what they were uh, doing. Okay, I think it, that's a good question, Barbara, because I would have wondered the same thing. And in terms of the schedule, he's not going to get any sympathy from the Preds because if you remember last year, the Preds played 14 games in 29 nights mm. through the first two rounds. They played every other night except for one in the first two rounds against Anaheim and San Jose because they went the distance. That's kind of how this works. If you play a seven-game series, you're going to have to start on no more than two days rest, probably just one in the next round. Should the NHL space that out a little bit? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I mean, frankly, for us in the mm -hmm. media, it was pretty brutal when we were trying to figure out where we were going for game one. Yeah. And we were watching that game at 11 o'clock at night and thinking, is it a Anaheim or Edmonton? Are we going right. to Canada? Right. You know, that was difficult for everybody involved. So I, I'd be okay with that, but that's just the way it goes. And oh, that yeah. certainly hurt the Preds last year in the playoffs. It probably did hurt Anaheim here. I think they were tired in the third periods mm -hmm. of these games. The Preds won 
uh, you know, an overtime game in game one right off of that breakdown. I, they stormed back to win in game three when I think they looked way better than the Ducks in the third period. They looked better than the Ducks in the third period last night after being yeah. dominated for much of the action early on. So, yeah, I think it plays a factor, but the moral of the story there is don't let your series go seven games. Yeah, exactly. That's Barbara, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you have a preference in your mind who you'd rather see the Predators play? Not that it maybe makes a difference to them, but do you, what, what is your thought on that? Oh, God. It's either Ottawa or Pittsburgh. I would like to see him play Ottawa. Yeah, because you think we had to have a better chance of beating them? I think so. I kind of agree with her. Now, the only yeah. reason I say that, and I don't know, at least from the outside, as a casual hockey fan, um, I, I, I pretty much in my mind think the best player in the world is Sidney Crosby. Yep. And, and be right. so you've got Pittsburgh with the best player in the world, and that's where at that level, him being that good, you just worry how the Predators would deal with someone. And they've got some other talent there. Although perhaps the best player in these playoffs has been Eric Carlson of the Senators, their yeah. defenseman who's uh, versatile and can do just about anything. He's been terrific in the postseason. So you're going to have stars on either of these but teams. You know what the thing to me about Ottawa, Nick, is Ottawa's going to – be greasy. Yeah. They're going to play that tough physical type of game. They're going to make everything difficult for you. The Penguins are a little bit more of a skilled team. I'm not sure based off of the injuries which one the Preds want to yeah, play, but generally injuries, they can yeah. play them both. But I think for, in general, the Preds would rather skate and show their skill and not be in a fist fight like they were against the Ducks. That would be their preference. Their that best be. series is what they did against the Blackhawks, yeah. which is a very skilled, not super physical team. Which is the kind but of the hockey. But the Preds can play both. Which so they'll they be ready both, either way. That's the kind of hockey I like to watch. I mean, right. when I first really started getting into hockey was back when Edmonton and Wayne Gretzky. Fast and slick. I, you know, mm. I, frankly, and I know some people watch it. I, the one thing that really turns me off about hockey, and others may disagree with me on this, but what really turns me off are the fights. I have no... I mean, I see where there's a skirmish like last night. I don't count that. But where there's a massive fight during the regular season, I didn't see as much in the playoffs. Maybe you can explain to me why. Yeah. But when the referees step back and the guys drop the gloves and start punching, I'm sorry. And maybe I'm just not. I just think that's awful. And I think it has no part in it. I like seeing the skill players, the ones that go around the great plays and the speed and the passing. The fights, you can have it. I think it's ridiculous. Now, the hard hits and some of the little skirmishes last night, that didn't bother me. But there have been times where they drop the sure. gloves and the officials stand back and let them duke it out. What the heck is that? The fights in the playoffs almost always stem from the hard hits you're talking about. Okay, in the and that's legit. In the regular season, and this is this is I'm where sorry. I have a real problem. The I regular no season, you oftentimes see guys off the opening face-off because they've lost three games in a row and they're trying to light a fire under their team. You actually have guys that that's basically their sole is role is to be the enforcer. No, they you know what they are? They're, and they start they're goons. Up. Yeah, they're good. No, that, that's, that's absolutely how it, how it works, and I hate that part of it. In yeah. the playoffs, you get guys you sticking up for people. And you don't see, and, it, and it, you don't see it much. Because you can't handle the penalties, You right? can't handle the penalty. You've got to make sure that if you're going to do it, the other guy's going with you and it cancels out. And so the guys are much more calculated and measured with those sort of things. But really, the only time you ever see it is if somebody messes with your goaltender. Right. Because you cannot afford to lose that sure. guy, so you're sure. going to stick up for him. And in this series, Cody McLeod took one in game four, I believe it was. Which was not when smart. It, when Harry Zolnerchuk absolutely got leveled in the neutral zone, yeah. and he went and right I understand, after Jared But Bull. still, then he took a penalty, sure. and that hurt. You know, that wasn't good. They scored after that, I think. I think they did. The one thing I'll say about this, too, I think both Ottawa and Pittsburgh, maybe I'm wrong, have both shuffled a couple goalies back and forth Correct. in their playoffs. We haven't. And so, and you, as you've said, I guess, the most important player on the field. If, if you have a guy who stops everything, it really doesn't matter what you have in front of you. You're going to win. And, and he's playing better than any other goalie. So that gives us a big edge. I wrote when Johansson went down that the Preds, who were basically the most, and have been, the most consistent team in the yeah, playoffs, sure. I, I wrote from that that they're now an underdog regardless of who they would face. Mm -hmm in the Stanley Cup final because of the injuries and not knowing exactly who's sure. going to be out there. The one thing that changes that is Pecorino because yeah. the goaltender can will you over the top. And you're right. Frederick Anderson, who's largely been great for the Senators, he gave up se – oh, he didn't give up all yeah. seven of them, but he gave up five, I think, the other night before getting pulled in a 7-0 <laughs> win. That. Mark andre Fleury came in for the Pens. He's been largely good, but he had a terrible game yeah. three. Now Matt Murray's in goal for them. So uh, the, the goaltender issues on the other side will be something that will definitely yeah. be highlighted. Goalies, goalies, I just got the image of them going back to Patrick Waugh and Hassey. They're quirky, superstitious type of characters, and, and, that, and confidence is everything, and that's why I yeah. just hope – Pekka, he's older now, sticks with it. But if he slips up, Preds are in 
big trouble. It hurts, and big, it can go trouble. away just like that. And that's, that's what I worry the thing about. Is if a, a weird fluky goal goes in, all of a sudden confidence wavers a little bit. But he's different. mature, he's older, and I think he's going to be fine. Listen, and I, just to a quick yeah. point of that last night. A big thing in this series was the injury to Ducks goalie John Gibson. Yeah. After period one of game five, he leaves. Jonathan Bernier comes in. He was decent in game five, although the Preds yeah. got all three goals, or well, two of the three empty netter against him. But last night in yeah. that game where the Ducks outshot the Preds 41 to 18, four of those shots against him went in the net. Yeah. And so that was a very high percentage of shots he faced that actually went in. And what you saw is while the Preds gave up a bunch of shots, and Pecorino credited his defense for this, they didn't give up a lot of odd man rushes where right. they hung him out to dry in tough spots. They helped him the out. Preds had two or three two-on-ones or three-on-twos where they got a great look and in the playoffs, you have to have your goaltender step up in that occasion. Peck has done it time and time again. Yeah. Bernier stopped none of them. As we go to break, did we know Bernier was going to start? Just we find that out just it, before it the came game. About, it came okay. when they hit the ice. The moment I saw that, I didn't know who Bernier was. I'm thinking, you know, because I thought Gibson was pretty good. I thought that it, I think Preds yeah. going to win this. Gibson's a former because All-Star. I just didn't think that goalie would be up to it, and he wasn't. We'll take a break. We'll be back with hey, stay on your line if you'd like, Phil, Grady, and others. Barbara, Anthony, thanks for your calls. Go Preds. We'll be right back. Let the weather spoil your cookout. Stay connected to the Storm 5 weather team. There's no safer place to plan your day. This week on Fishing Affliction TV. That's a good one. That's a good one there, boys and girls. Join us for part one of The Big Dog and the Priest as the Big Dog is catching some big bass on Jay Percy Priest. Mm, that's a good one. That's more what daddy ordered. Your Fish and Affliction TV weekend begins Saturdays at 5 p.m. right here on News Channel 5 Plus, your home for Fish and Affliction. If you want to shed the fat and sculpt your body to get that slim, sexy look of your dreams, then you need to stop working out. Say what? And start rocking out with Rockin' Body, the fun new body makeover system that was created by fitness expert and insanity creator Sean T. Rockin' Body combines dance and fitness in a fun new way so you can achieve insane weight loss. I lost 30 pounds dancing. Now you can tone and tighten your abs, shrink and shape your hips and thighs, and lift and firm your booty, all while you're just dancing. I've lost 33 pounds. I feel sexy. And now for a limited time, the complete $80 Rock and Body system is 75% off. That's right, Rock and Body is only $19.95. We'll even upgrade you to express shipping free. Get the complete Rock and Body system for only $19.95. Call 1-800-307-0417 or order online at rockandbody.com. 1-800-307-0417. Call now. This is your view every morning. Sky 5 rises and shines just like you do. To get Five to the Live. news you need faster than anyone else. The only full-time morning news helicopter. Sky 5 is a difference you can see every morning. Only on News Channel 5. We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. It's not Sports Line, but Steve Layman's here as we have to talk. And it's not a problem because we want to talk. Uh, headline, yeah, I'm holding it up, and there's the highlights. Of course, you know what I'm talking about. Prehistoric, the Predators win last night. They advanced to the Stanley Cup. They'll either play the Penguins or the Senators. And um, you were know, just talking about Barry, Barry Melrose, who is uh, you know, kind of the lead commentator, that one of the sure. few people at ESPN that did not get fired. And he, he uh, talking about the, the Predators, what was it he said? And he's a very respected voice in hockey. Uh, I mean, he's our only analyst. He's so a national he, analyst. He should be yeah. the guy who's the most objective as you could possibly find on their network and he's been saying for two rounds that he's secretly hoping that Nashville makes the Stanley Cup final because of the atmosphere in the team it will be the best Stanley Cup final ever put on by the NHL yeah and so now he's got half of that wish and we were just talking in the break what the NHL hopes for Ottawa Nashville is not going to be super great for the ratings especially here domestically yeah Pittsburgh would be better although that's be... not a huge market yeah. either you do get the star power of Crosby and Malkin with that though right the thing is though People who watch, and true hockey fans, they know now what the scene is in Nashville. 
I don't think it's going to be treated as a small market team. To me, Nashville in the Stanley Cup final is way more interesting to the general hockey fan than like if you had Philadelphia in there. Yeah, I agree. A, a bigger it, city, bigger market, yeah. but not nearly as interesting in not terms the of the story. product. story. A number right. eight seed, if, if you if you get behind underdogs in anything, why? and they are an underdog being an eight seed, even though they're playing as well as anyone, man, why wouldn't you want to watch that and see if they could knock off? Were, were the uh, Penguins the number one seed in the uh, No, the Penguins were oh, the no, no, that's Right. Second seed Beside out of Washington. the Metropolitan Division, they beat Washington, which, they beat which Washington. was the president's trophy. But still, win. they're a top seed, and it'd be, it would end up. I wouldn't mind seeing the Penguins in Nashville. That would be my thing. I think that'd probably be the most exciting. Series. Yeah, yeah. So let's go to uh, Phil. Hi, Phil. Hey. Good morning, Phil. What's on your mind? Good morning, uh, Steve. I just want to ask you a couple questions. Sure. Uh, can you give us a five-minute crash course on uh, some of the rules, like boarding and high sticking? And uh, I just want to. Uh, give a shout out to all the Preds fans. Congratulations! And I, I want to play the Pittsburgh Penguins in the playoffs and beat uh, Sidney Crosby. I'm with you, and Phil. Beat the defending champs. Give him a minute one because we have a couple more sure, calls. But sure. real quick, boarding and high stick. Okay, boarding is if you're a guy's facing the boards, you come up, hit him from behind, and knock him we into the boards. We saw that boards. yesterday. Saw that, that a couple times. Nick, his well, head. Nick Ritchie got a game misconduct for it. That was an yeah. egregious boarding. Yes. So you really can't do that. That's all about protection. High sticking also about protection. That's when the stick comes up on anything other than a follow through of a shot. Okay. The stick comes up and hits a guy above basically the neck you know okay. usually it's in the face that's how you get it because the guy recoils in horror. and those are going to be penalties those are always going to be penalties they can vary in times based off the degree of severity and real quick one thing a 